Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss how to write a Python program to find the super digit of a given number. First, you should know what is a super digit. The super digit of a single digit number is the digit itself. If it is a multi-digit number, then super digit is the sum of all digits repeatedly until the sum is a single digit. I hope you have understood from the definition. Now let me discuss with an example. Suppose if I say 1. For 1, what is a super digit? The 1 itself. Because see, look at here. That super digit of a single digit number is the digit itself. The given number is 1, which is a single digit number. So then the super digit will be 1. If I say 1, 2. If I, it is 1, 2, you need to compute the sum of the individual digits. Look at here. But for multi-digit number, the super digit is the sum of all digits repeatedly until the sum is a single digit number. Now, if you take the individual digits of 1 and 2, means it is a 12, so it will be 1 and 2. If you perform the addition, you will get the 3. So now, I can say 3 is the super digit for the number 12. If I take a number 1, 2, 3, now we will compute the sum of individual digits. The individual digits are 1, 2, 3, so their sum will be equal to 6. So I can say 6 is the super digit for the 1, 2, 3. If I say 1, 2, 3, 4, what is the super digit is? I want to compute the sum of individual digits, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 10. Now look at here. Is this 10 is a single digit now? No. Is it clear? Look at here what they are saying. Until the sum is a single digit number. So 10 is not a single digit. So what you need to do? Again you need to compute the sum of individual digits. So 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. So I can say 1 is a super digit for 1, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, if I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then compute the sum of individual digits, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 15. Now, 15 is not a single digit number. If the sum is not a single digit number, again you need to compute the sum of the individual digits, which is 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. Sorry, 6. So I can say 6 is the swing super digit for the number called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I hope you have understood with these examples. Now what I will do is that I will write the Python program to find the super digit of a given number. So what we need to do first, we need to take the input from the user. So I will write n is equal to int of input enter a number. We are need to ask the user to enter the number. Once he enter the number, we need to compute the sum of the individual digits. And if the sum is not a single digit number, again we need to repeatedly compute the sum of individual digits. So what I need to do is that I will write the logic first. I will write while n greater than or equal to 10. If it is so, what I will do, I will write x is equal to n and then I will take sum is equal to 0. Then I will write while x is greater than 0. Okay. Then I will write x r is equal to x modulus 10. I want to compute the individual digit. So I will write a reminder is equal to x modulus 10 or r is equal to x modulus 10. Then I will write sum is equal to sum plus r and then I will write x is equal to x floor division 10. Once it is done, we have computed the sum of the individual digits, then I can write n is equal to sum. Okay, I need to assign that one to the sum. Then finally what I will do is that I will print the I will print the sum value. So I can write the super digit super digit is I can write 
sum. Okay, look at here. Let me run the program. Okay, and let me give the input as 1, 2, 3, 4. Just now we have discussed the super digit of 1, 2, 3, 4 will be 1. Okay, look at here. We got 1. How it has happened, we will discuss. Okay, let me trace this program. Okay, as the user has entered the number as 1, 2, 3, 4, I will write n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at this condition. You have a nested loop concept. So, this one I can say is an outer loop and then you have the inner loop. These statements are belongs to the outer loop and these statements belongs to the inner loop. Okay, look at here. As the condition is what n should be greater than or equal to 10. What is the n value 1, 2, 3, 4 is greater than or equal to 10? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, the statements which are there in the outer loop need to be executed. What is the first statement? You are assigning the n value to the variable called x. So, n is having 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that you are assigning to the x. Now, x is having the value 1, 2, 3, 4 and you are initializing some value as 0. Then you are verifying another condition in the while loop. What is that one? x should be greater than 0. Okay. What is the x value? 1, 2, 3, 4. Is it greater than 0? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, the statements which are there in the inner loop will be executed. What are the statements? There are three statements are there. Now we will execute them. R is equal to, what is the x modulus 10? What is the x value right now? 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4 modulus 10 will give you what? A reminder which is 4. So R is having the value called 4. Then what we have performed? Sum is equal to sum plus R. What is the sum initial value? 0. So, sum is equal to sum plus r which is 0 plus 4 is equal to 4. Right now, sum is having the value 4. Then what you are doing? x is equal to x floor division 10. So, x is equal to x floor division 10. x is having the value 1, 2, 3, 4. If I perform the floor division 10, floor division always give the quotient. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you divide by 10, you will get the quotient as 123. So, now x is having the value 123. Okay. Is it clear? So, now right here, x is having the value 123. See, these three statements are done. Then what you will do? Again, you will verify the condition. What is the condition? x should be greater than 0. What is the current x value? 123. Is 123 is greater than 0? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, what you will do? You will execute these statements again. What is the first statement? Uh, reminder is equal to x modulus 10. What is the x value? 123 modulus 10. You will get the uh, reminder as 3. So, r will have the value 3. Sum is equal to sum plus r. Already sum is having the value 4 and r is having the value right now 3. So, 4 plus 3 is 7. So, sum is currently having the value 7. Then x is equal to x floor division 10. x is having the value 123. If you divide by 10, you will get the quotient as 12. So, right now x is having the value 12. Then again, you will verify the condition. What is the condition? x should be greater than 0. What is the x value? 12. Is 12 is greater than 0? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, again you will execute the statements. What is that? R is equal to x modulus 10. What is the x value? 12. 12 modulus 10 will give you the remainder as 2. So, R will have the value 2. Then sum is equal to sum plus R. Sum is already having the value 7 and R is having the value 2. So, 7 plus 2 is 9. Then x is equal to x floor division 10. What is the x value? 12. 12 floor division 10 will give you the quotient as 1. So, right now x is having the value 1. Then again you will verify the condition. What is the condition? x should be greater than 0. What is the x value? 1. Is 1 is greater than 0? Yes. So, the condition is true. If the condition is true, again you will statements which are, again you will execute the statements which are there in the inner loop. What it is? R is equal to x modulus 10. 
x is having the value 1, 1 modulus 10 will give you the remainder as 1. So r will get the value 1, then sum is equal to sum plus r. Sum is already having the value 9, and r is currently having the value 1. So 9 plus 1 is 10, then x is equal to x floor division 10. x is currently having the value 1. 1 floor division 10 will give you the quotient as 0. So x is having the value 0 and sum is having the value 10. Now again you will verify the condition. x should be greater than 0. What is the x value right now? x value is 0. Is 0 is greater than 0? No, the condition is false. If the condition is false, what I need to do? I need to execute the next statement because as the while condition is false, the statements which are there in the inner loop will not be executed. The next statement which is there, n is equal to sum. So, n will get the value as 10. Okay. So, initially the n value is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, the n is getting the value 10. Okay. Keep that 10 value 10 here. Once the all the statements which are there in the outer loop is done, then again you will verify the condition. What is the condition? n should be greater than or equal to 10. What is the n value right now? 10. So 10 is greater than or equal to 10? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, what you will do? Again, you will execute the statements. What is the first statement? x is equal to n. What is the n value? 10. Okay, so x is getting the value 10. Again, sum is initialized to 0. Then x is greater than 0. What is the x value right now? 10. 10 is greater than 0? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, again you will execute the statements. What is the first statement? R is equal to x modulus 10. x is having the value 10. So, 10 modulus 10, you will get the remainder as 0. So, r will get the value 0. So, sum is equal to sum plus r. Sum value is 0 and r value is 0. So, sum will become 0. Then, x is equal to x floor division 10. What is the x value 10? 10 floor division 10 will give you the quotient as 1. Okay. Then, x is currently having the value 1. Then again what you will do, you will verify the condition. x value is 1. Is the 1 is greater than 0? Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, again you will execute the statements. r is equal to x modulus 10. What is the x value 1? 1 modulus 10 will give you the remainder as 1. So r will get the value 1. Then next is sum is equal to sum plus r. Okay sum value is 0 and r value is 1. So, which is 0 plus 1 is sum is having the value 1. Then x is equal to x floor division 10. Okay. What is the x value? 1. 1 floor division 10 will give you the quotient as 0. So, x will get the value 0. Then again, you will verify the condition x greater than 0. x value is how much? 0. Is 0 is greater than 0? No, the condition is false. If the condition is false, the statements which are there in the inner loop will not be executed. The next statement which is there in the outer loop will be executed. What is it? n is equal to sum. What is the sum value? 1. So, n will get the value as 1. Then you will verify this condition outer loop condition. What is the condition? n should be greater than or equal to 10. What is the n value right now? 1. Is 1 is greater than or equal to 10? No, the condition is false. If the condition is false, the statements which are there in the outer loop will not be executed. The next statement after the outer loop will be executed. This is the statement is there. What it is? Print the super digit is sum. What is the sum is having the value? 1. That will be displayed as an output. If you want to verify, let me give the another input. If I give the input as 1, as it is a single digit, the sum will be 1 only. So, the super digit is 1. Okay. Similarly, if I want to give the input as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you will get the sum as 15. Then again, if you compute the sum of individual digits, you will get the output as 6. So, the super digit is 6. 
I hope it is clear for you. If you still have any doubts related to this program, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.